We rise for the Alleluia and the reading of the Holy Gospel. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the third chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Then Jesus went home, and the crowd gathered again so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him, for they were saying, He is out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, he is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out demons. And he called them to him and said to them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he may plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the children of man, and whatever blasphemies they utter, but whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. For they had said he has an unclean spirit. And his mother and brothers came, and standing outside they sent to him and called him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, who are my mother and my brothers? And looking about as those who sat around him, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be Seated as we sing our hymn number 672.
Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. There's an old phrase that so many of us have grown accustomed to. It is one that I've had used on me to guilt me into coming to a family function instead of other commitments I had had. It often will also guilt someone who is being abused into staying with their family, making them think they will never be as loved as much as they are by their family. That phrase, which I'm sure you all are familiar with, is, blood is thicker than water. What this means, according to our understanding, is that the blood that we share with our families, the blood that we share with our loved ones, that comes from our lineage, is supposed to remind us that our family is always to be the most important. Our family, according to the proverb, must be our number one priority. Family is always more important than our bonds of friendship, at least according to our current understanding. However, there is a counter-argument that has arisen. This argument comes when one understands that that blood is thicker than water is not the full saying. The rest of the saying is the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. Meaning that one might realize that it's not the family who is the most important and not the family that we're born into that's the most important relationship. It's the ones we choose. It's the bonds we we, we form as we fight and as we prosper, and as we go through our lives. This blood of the covenant is the bond that soldiers have on the field of battle. And they claim that it is stronger than any of our family ties. So which is it? Are our family ties to be stronger than anything? Or are the bonds that we choose and bleed for and die with stronger. Let's ask Jesus. Well, to start off, let's think of the Gospels as a whole and the Scripture as a whole. Jesus speaks of God as his Father. That is, he prays to the Father. He teaches of the Father's kingdom. Jesus teaches that he will return to the Father and prepare a place for us. Jesus teaches us even to pray to our Heavenly Father. Obviously, family is important to Jesus. It is important to God. There are numerous examples of its importance to to God in the Scriptures. Obey your father and mother. Guard and protect your sister. Treat your children with love and discipline them according to the Lord. Teach them the way that they should go. All of these things are directions that God tells us in regards to our family. Yet in our gospel lesson for today, we see the other side. They, then Jesus went home and the crowd gathered so that they could not even eat. And when his family heard it, they went out to seize him. For they were saying, he is out of his mind. And then the scribes who came down from Jerusalem were saying, he is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he casts out demons. Jesus' family wanted to stop Jesus from doing what he was doing. They were afraid for him. They were thought he was going to be killed. And so they wanted him to stop healing and teaching and performing the miracles that he was doing. All because they were afraid of him. And they were uh, afraid for him. And they were going to seize him, meaning grab him and, and forcibly take him home to prevent him from doing so. 
Our text records, and that his mother and his brothers came, and standing outside, they sent to him and called to him. And a crowd was sitting around him, and they said to him, Your mother and your brothers are outside seeking you. And he answered them, Who are my mother and brothers? And looking around him, he said, Here are my mother and brothers. Jesus was ready to give up his mother and brothers for the sake of the crowd. So which is it? Is it the family you are born with or the family you choose? It would seem from our context that Jesus, that for Jesus, family can be replaced. Your mother and your brothers all can be replaced on a whim. No. The truth is that is not really what Jesus is saying. For like our understanding of the proverb that blood is thicker than water, we are missing something. Something that I intentionally, temporarily omitted. This, of course, is what Jesus says at the end of our gospel lesson. Whoever does the will of God, he is my brother and sister and mother. In other words, as it is as if Jesus is saying, it's not just the biological family that you've been born into, and it's not just the ones whom you choose. It's not either or. For him, his family are those who belong to his Father, the Lord God. In many ways, if those of your family or even those you choose to yoke yourself to, if they try to keep you from the Lord, if they try to prevent you from coming to faith or having faith or believing, then it's best to leave them behind. In the context of our gospel lesson, it is quite simple. Jesus is doing what he is supposed to do. He is teaching and healing. He is causing a ruckus. And we know that his end destination is the cross. His family comes and tries to keep him from fulfilling his whole purpose in coming. They tried to prevent him from teaching and proclaiming the kingdom of God. So in many ways, Jesus had no other choice than to ignore them and continue serving God rather than man. Jesus will even later in his ministry say, do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it. And whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. As Christians, the proverb, blood is thicker than water, has been has really taken on a third meaning. One that is much more in line with what Jesus teaches. We use the full phrase, the blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb. Yet in a Christian perspective, it is not the blood uh, that, of the bond that was forged in war or, or even by our own choices. It's not of the relationships we choose that are the most important. And it's not our family bonds either. It is the blood of the most important covenant. The blood of Christ Jesus is to unite us. It is his life-giving blood that is poured out on the cross. It is his forgiveness that he gives to us who are washed in the blood of the Lamb. His blood which gives 
to us everything we need. His blood we need to focus on that gives us our most important relationship. Our relationship with our Heavenly Father and His family. The blood of the covenant that God made with His people. The author of Hebrews describes it like this. How much more will the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without blemish to God, purify our conscience from dead works to serve the living God? Therefore, he is the, the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. Since a death occurred, that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. You see, Jesus wasn't really turning his back on his family on a whim. In fact, everything he was doing was in part for his earthly family. As Jesus turned away from his family toward the other people, he was not saying that his family was less important to him. What he was doing for them, what he was doing for all of us, was doing so to bring people to eternal life. You see, Jesus had to continue his mission. He had to go to that cross. He had to continue healing and teaching and preaching. He had to continue proclaiming the kingdom of God. It's the same with us. When we blatantly ignore God and his commands, and the promise is for the sake of our earthly peace, or for peace in our earthly relationships, we, we need to turn our backs on them. Not in the sense that we don't minister to them, but in the sense that if they prevent us from sharing God's love or don't want us to, then we need to do it all the more. Because it's not just about our temporary well-being. It is about our eternal well-being, the well-being for all people. It could be that your adherence to God and his promises that someone might see your faith. They might see your example and come to know the Lord. They might know Jesus and have everlasting life. That they may be brought into the blood of the covenant of Christ. Because you know what? That's exactly what happened with Jesus' family. Mary, his mother, would follow him to that cross. She would be there. She would be there and hear the promise on Easter that he was raised from the dead. Mary, his mother, would see him ascend into heaven. She would be there when his replacement was given, when the replacement for Judas was given. His brother James, he would go and write one of the epistles. They came to faith. Even though Jesus shunned them for a time. Even though it, it brought uncertainty and despair. And so our earthly bonds in this earth, our chosen bonds in this life, no matter how important and wonderful they may be, they are never more important than the blood of the covenant that we have been made part of because of Jesus. So when those relationships test your love and fidelity against the Lord, be like Jesus. Let his example be your guide. Let the importance of belonging to God's family be shown so that they may truly know his love too. Let our example of word and deed be found in the confession that we have, in the faith that we have. Let it be so that they may belong to his covenant as well. In Jesus' name. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding, guard your heart and mind in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. 
At this time, I invite you to please stand as we uh, uh, confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate, who suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We continue with prayer. Merciful God, you have sent the promised offspring to crush Satan's head forever by the death of Christ our Savior. As you gave comfort to Adam and Eve, receiving their meager confessions for the sake of your grace and promising deliverance from sin and its curse, so comfort us by the forgiveness of sins and give us hope in the promise of eternal life and your new creation. Lord, in your mercy, give courage to your church, O Lord, that as we believe, so we would also speak of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the confident hope we have in him, that we too will be raised and brought into his presence. Embolden us by your spirit to confess this Christian faith from a lively conscience, that for Christ's sake, grace may extend to more and more people and increase thanksgiving for your, to your glory. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, your Son was rejected on earth, even by his friends and relatives. Give consolation to all Christians who feel the sword of division brought about by the confession of Christ's truth especially those who cannot find agreement within their own families on the word of God, from which life itself comes. Assure them that, they, that their stand for your truth is necessary. Guard them from speaking a false or easier peace, and turn us, to every earthly, turn us in every earthly dis- disappointment toward the promise of your eternal and undivided church triumphant. Lord, in your mercy. Almighty God, no kingdom divided against itself can stand, and a house divided must fall. Graciously preserve our nation with its government. Frustrate the work of of Satan and the seeds of destruction he would sow in every place where he not stayed by your gracious hand. Unite our leaders and our people for the common good while leading us to hope in the eternal kingdom that is not of this world. Lord, in your mercy, eternal Lord God, hear our prayers for your servants who suffer in this earthly tent. We pray especially for Edna Grote and Linda Johnson. We pray for Connie Yonkers and Phyllis Ehlers, Brian Buckolds, Gary Hograve, and Barb Humder. We also ask, Lord, that you be with Keegan Seidel and his regiment, 
and with all our soldiers uh, who are fighting and protecting both near and far. Do not, Lord, let them lose heart, but fix their eyes beyond what is transient to, to things unseen. By this slight momentary affliction, prepare them for an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. When at last you will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we ask that you continue to bless our land with the, with the rain and sunshine that we need. Allow our crops to grow that they may uh, feed the world and our communities. Lord, in your mercy. As Satan once overcame our first parents through the eating of trees, the, the tree's fruit, so overcome him now among us by the fruit of your son's cross, his body and blood given and shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. Bless all who commune with repentance and faith, and in the comfort of the gospel they may be cleansed and prepared for eternal life with you. Lord, in your mercy. What was lost in paradise has been regained by the conjuring wounds of your Son, uh, crucified and risen again. In him we are restored as your children and made bold to ask for every need. Hear us for his sake and in his name, even Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing together the offertory found on page uh, 159. your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who ascended above the heavens and sitting at your right hand, poured out on this day the promised Holy Spirit on his chosen disciples. For this and all the whole earth rejoices with exceeding joy. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. 
gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his Faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood, as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth, to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom, which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship, with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Welcome to the Lord's table. Take me. This is the true body, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptismal grace and the life everlasting. Take me. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you and keep you in your baptismal grace and the life everlasting. Take me, the true body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in true faith as a life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. Welcome to the Lord's table. Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in true faith until life everlasting. Depart in peace.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Now, I, I know it, it's technically under a distribution hymn. But I also know it's a, it's a favorite of so many of ours. Um, so if we could sing, uh, at least, give me a second, I gotta figure out how many, I think there are eight. We won't sing them all, because I know not everyone wants to sing them all. If we could sing the first four stanzas of I Know My Redeemer Lives on page 461. Actually, first four and number eight.
Once again, good morning, and thank you for indulging me with singing I Know My Redeemer Lives. I know many of you enjoy it as well. Uh, uh, just as a reminder, um, VBS information is in the bulletin, and there's sign-up sheets that you can take home uh, and fill out, or you can fill them out here and just put them in, let's say where to put them in. Put them in the Board of Ed's box if you fill them out today. Uh, invite kids, grandkids, great-grandkids if you have them, and, and bring them all. We'd love to have everybody for VBS. It'll be a, a wonderful and joyous time. Uh, and we will, as far as I know, we are planning to have our, our, our church potluck that following Sunday after VBS. So keep that in mind um, because it's, it's a wonderful time to gather as, as a, the family of God. Um, also, Ladies' Aid is collecting uh, good used clothing, so it, or good new clothing if you have it and you don't wear it because you, you grew before you could fit into it. Like, I have a couple pairs of pants like that. <laughs> um, uh, please uh, bring them in by the, the date that's listed in the bulletin. Are there any other announcements? Okay, then go in peace as you serve the... Oh. Well, it's Wayne Sump's 80th birthday today? The 15th. 15th. We got a week. Yeah. I knew it was coming. So, Wayne, be prepared. We're singing to you in a couple weeks. <laughs> Are there any other announcements? All right. Then go in peace as you serve the Lord.